My first sketchbook study for this class is going to be avocado halves. First thing I'm going to do is draw with my HB pencil um, my avocados. Just a quick sketch and outline. I'm having one angled this way and one half angled that way. Um, I drew the diagonal lines because it helps me to sketch more accurately. I would say that drawing is not one of my strengths, but I hope it's something I can improve. Just keep your lines really light and then you don't have to worry about erasing them. You can go over your sketch a bunch of times. I picked an avocado for the first study because I think there's a lot of fundamentals you can learn when you paint an avocado and specifically how light and shadows work. So I'm going to be talking about that during this painting. All right, so on this avocado, I'm going to have my pit and this half is going to have the empty hole where the pit used to be. I am noticing in my reference photo that the light appears to be coming in this direction. So what I want to pay attention to is where the light is hitting the avocado and where the shadows are. If I look at the pit, I can see a bit of a highlight in this area and more of a shadow in this area. So when I'm painting the pit, in order to make it more dimensional, I want to make sure that I have a highlight, a midtone, and a shadow. The same thing where the hole is. It is still green, but you'll notice a large portion of the interior here is shaded. So we're going to make sure that we use a more shaded or desaturated green in the pit and then this part um, in the hole and then this part is more in highlight. And then I'm paying attention to my cast shadow which starts about here on this half and here and the shadow is going to be darker, closest to the avocado. On this one here, the shadow comes down this way. And here, again, the shadow will be darker here. Okay, so if you pay attention to the light and the shadows, and you mix your paint according to that, you're going to get a more dimensional looking um, avocado. First color I'm going to use is Payne's Gray, which is going to be my darkest value. And when I say the word value, I basically just mean how light or dark a color is on a scale of 1 to 10 with black being a one and 10 being a white. So if I look at my value finder, um, I would say this Payne's Gray is a one or a two, probably a one. And so I, what I want to look for in my painting, in addition to the light and shadows, are the shifts in value color. And I'll talk more about that as I go along. I'm using um, a Filbert brush, number two. A flat brush would work just as well for this, a round brush too. And I'm just making a thin outline around the outside of my avocado. the 
dark is a little thicker on this half, the way the avocado is leaning. So I'm going to put that in and it's pretty thin the rest of the way around. While I have this Payne's Gray on my palette, I'm going to mix my shadow color. Payne's Gray is a cool um, gray blue. A cool color, when you look at it, uh, will show depth or will appear deeper and a warm color will come forward. So cool colors recede, warm colors come forward. So when we paint our pit here, this is going to be a warm brown. The shadow is going to be a cool green. And my shadow here under the avocado is going to be a cool gray blue. And this, I'm not trying to be too exact with my brush strokes. You don't have to be super exact. But I would say try to have the shadow closest to the avocado, a little bit darker than the rest of the shadow. And if you want clean edges, I'm going to go around at the end and clean up my edges with um, a background color. Okay, and I'm just wiping my brush on a paper towel. I'm going to use a little water to clean it off. But I'm going to keep using the same brush and I'm going to mix my green colors. I have my yellow and my turquoise, which make a really vibrant green. You could also use the Payne's Gray to mix a green. It's going to give you a very different green than the turquoise. So that's the Payne's Gray with the green, which is very dark. That could be a nice color if you were painting the outside of an avocado. Compared to a really vibrant green that you get with the turquoise, which is not a good color for an avocado. But if you mix in a little bit of red, using my Cornacridone red, you could use a just a touch of red. I'm going to do a little more yellow. And you can see that it's the red starts to desaturate the green because it is red and green are complementary colors. I want this to read a little more yellow. And I'm going to use this color or that inner green that I see, that inner green ring. Um, all my greens really from this same mixture here. Maybe I'll dip into this a little bit. What I want to pay attention to now in the flush of the avocado is any slight shifts in value. So if you really zoom in and look at the flush of an avocado, 
even though it is kind of a light yellow green, in some areas it has a little more white, in some areas it almost looks a little pink to me, like underneath here. Um, that's what I want to pay attention to. And so I'm going to try to have some value shifts as I'm painting the that light yellow green. If I just took this one color and painted everything inside here this same color, my avocado is going to look a little flat. So I want to I want to use a variety of greens loosely based on what I'm seeing in the reference photo. So I'm going to mix a little red in and you can see that's really desaturating and I'm looking at the photo and seeing where I might be able to use a little bit of this color. Maybe down here. I'm just going to keep adding in different amounts of yellow, turquoise, red, and white to get all the different shades of green. Hopefully you can see the slight shifts in color as I'm painting. If you get too much paint on your brush, you can just kind of wipe some of it off. And I'm going to just put maybe a few more brush strokes down and then I'm going to move on to painting the pit and the hole where the pit used to be. Alright, we're just sketchbook painting so I wouldn't get too caught up in the details. Just make sure you have um, you know, value shifts, color shifts, variety of greens in the flesh. I'm going to just wipe my brush on my paper towel over here and using these same colors, I'm going to mix a, a brown color for the pit. Uh, I need more yellow for this. And I'm using the same brush, it's just wiped off. I am going to mix an orange color. And the complement of orange is blue. So if I mix some blue into my orange, it's going to desaturate it. If you're using a phthalo blue or a phthalo turquoise, you just need a little bit in your orange because um, the phthalos are really, um, they have a lot of pigment 
and it will really overpower some of the other colors fast. Okay, so that made a brown color, kind of a medium brown. I think I want it a little more red. So I'm putting a little red back in. And I want to remember to pay attention to the highlighted side and the shadowed side. So I'm going to add a highlight to that in a minute. But before I do that, I'm going to add some more blue to my brown to get a much darker brown for the shadow side of the pit. I just wiped my brush on my paper towel again. If your paints are starting to dry up on you, it's a good idea to spritz your palette with a little bit of water. And I'm going to add some more value shifts in here. I'm putting in a little bit of yellow. I think I'll put in a little bit of white. And then I really want to lighten a little spot up for the highlight. And so this side is more highlighted to me. And so now I have a lighter area, some medium and a dark, and hopefully that um, will read as a 3D effect. I am just wiping my brush. I'm going to rinse it a little. And I'm just going to touch up a little bit around the avocado. And you know what, I'm going to take a little bit of the brown. And because I see little spots of brown around the edges in some spots. All right, that shift in color is going to help your avocado read more like um, dimensional rather than flat. Okay. Wipe my brush. I'm going to now mix a desaturated green and then a highlighted yellow green to make this part of the avocado appear to recede a bit. And I'm going to use, I'll make a green first. I'm going to add in a bunch of red. I'm going to do a little more white. You could even try to add in a dot of your Payne's Gray if you want. It'll help to gray it down, cool it off. And I want to pay attention to the area that is in shadow and the area that is more highlighted.
that is more in shadow. And then it's much brighter right here. I'm just gonna go over the highlight again. Hopefully that reads like a shadow. The way I'm looking down at it, it's hard for me to tell. If I were painting this and I wasn't doing it on camera, I would probably have my, um, my sketchbook propped up. I think it's easier to see what you're doing that way. Okay, I think that's good. I'm just gonna add in a background color. I always feel the need to keep going, which I'm going to try to not do that in that video, this video. Okay, um, last thing, I'm gonna grab a new brush and for my background color, I'm going to go with uh, something that complements the yellow or green in the avocado. You could probably do a purple, which would be a nice complement to the yellowy green, um, a pink or a peach because red and green are complements. Um, so I think that would look good as well. I think that's what I'm going to do to make a nice bright background. A little bit of my red, a tiny bit of yellow so that it's not um, pink pink, it's more of a peachy pink. You can kind of test your color. I don't usually paint the whole page. I just go around the, the edges of my object that I painted to clean up the edges. And if you wanna reshape your shadow at all or smooth the edges of your shadow, now would be the time to do that. I didn't mix enough paint. I'm using a flat brush for this size four. And that's not the same color, but I don't mind. I am going to flip my sketchbook because I can paint better from the right side. I can be smoother.
And that's it. This is how you paint an avocado. It's really going to be the process for everything we paint, all the different fruit, paying attention to the highlights and shadows and shifts in value. And you can clean this up as much or as little as you want. I'm going to leave mine like this. If you paint an avocado or any other fruit, I would love to see what you paint. Um, you can upload a photo of your painting um, in the projects tab, which is below the video. If you click projects and resources, um, you'll see all the supplies and colors I used for this painting as well as the reference photo that I used. Um, to upload a photo of your painting, you click on create project and upload a photo of your work. All right, on to our next fruit.